Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan, and today we are continuing with part eight of our how to LS swap something with the cooling system that involves the radiator, upper and lower radiator hoses, heater core hoses, and filling with coolant. Before we go any further, let's go ahead and thank our sponsor, Summit Racing. Summit Racing has sent over an absolute huge amount of parts. They're an incredible sponsor to work with. I've been using them uh, personally, being a customer for years and years and years. They have a great website, incredible prices, and the most wonderful, helpful team of customer support. So make sure you buy all your speed parts from summitracing.com. Now this may not seem like a huge job, but it was actually pretty involved and it's important to get the cooling just right on your car. Now I have a 1955 Chevrolet Bel Air and I'm trying to make this guide as applicable as possible so it can help as many people as possible with whatever you want to LS swap. But if you have a different car than a 1955 Bel Air, your parts are gonna look a little different, but the process is exactly the same. So with all that out of the way, let's jump in and get this cooling system done. So in front of me, I have a bunch of really awesome cooling stuff sent over by our friends at Summit Racing, including two 10 inch uh, radiator fans that are gonna go onto our Summit branded radiator. Now you're gonna have to order the radiator bespoke for your vehicle, and I recommend a nice aluminum unit like this one. I'll have a link down below in the description to this unit, but it won't work unless you have a Tri-5 Chevy like we have. So make sure you get the one that uh, is bespoke for your car and you can find that at summitracing.com. And then those fans are going to be held to the radiator using this shroud and we are gonna have to do a little bit of mock-up on it um, just to make sure it's gonna secure to our radiator and then our fans can go inside of this. So our radiator can't go in a sock placement and I will show you why in just a minute. So I've already fabricated these up and these are going to attach to the side of the radiator and go into these stock holes. 99 times out of 100, you're not gonna have to do something like that um, because you can just put your stock radiator back in your stock home, but we had to be a little bit creative and uh, let's go take a look at why that is. So now we're over here by the car, the front of the engine, here is our water pump and you can kind of see our problem. Right here is where a radiator would normally sit. As you can see, it would be an interference fit with this and most likely our damper as well and uh, I don't want to change any of that. I don't want to put on a new water pump and a new damper, although you could. I really like this damper because it's like a really nice race unit from Summit, and uh, I already have this all set up. Um, so the only thing I thought to do, and I thought this would work great, is if I just put the radiator on this side of the core support, and that's something uh, you might have to kind of figure out while you are basically r and ding your own LS swap project, and don't be afraid to get a little creative. So I've already taken one of our fans out from Summit Racing. Looks like a very nice heavy unit. It's gonna pull a lot of air for us. Now on these fans, you can reverse the polarity of them and take the blade off and flip it around and make it into a push fan. I don't like doing that. We're gonna use these on pull. So this shroud is gonna mount on the back side of our radiator and I've already marked off our holes that we need to drill in order to mount our fans. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. So my fans are nice and mounted. I've uh, got four holes for each, four nuts and bolts combos with that parts kit I showed you earlier. So this is ready to go on our radiator. I also wanted to mention that these fans are a universal. So you, if you had like a weird radiator or something like that, and uh, even if it didn't have a shroud, like a bespoke shroud, it does, it does come with these, which actually go through the fan, through the radiator, and then they have a little securing thing on the end of it. That way your fan doesn't go anywhere. Actually on my 67 Camaro, there really isn't a way to mount a uh, fans like this all nice you uh, it's just kind of attached to the radiator because um, no one makes like an offset mount so that does come with these super handy to have they also have these and what these do uh, give you different options on where to put bolt holes on the shroud so maybe these wouldn't work for you you could put this one in and then boom maybe that one will work for you so there's a lot of flexibility with these fans um, so that's why it makes them nice and universal and the link is down below in the description so sometimes you can mount your shroud to your radiator before you put it in, and sometimes you have to do it after. Ours is an after situation. So normally you'd put the radiator on this side of the core support and drop it down in there. We can't do that in our application. You most likely can. Ours, however, we kind of mocked it out and looked at it and found out if we just kind of set it here, that it works and the hood actually still shuts, which blew my mind. And that's why I had those straps made up. So now we can bolt our straps uh, to our radiator and our core support. Normally you don't need these straps, you would just bolt your radiator directly to your core support. So we have our side of our radiator and our core support, and I can slide my uh, custom fabricated <laughs> aluminum strapping in. And I can just slide that bolt in, followed by my 
washer, lock washer, and nut. All right, we'll leave that a little looser right now. And then we can bring our radiator forward, line it up so our strand is secure in place. Well, that works. Once both of those are finger tight, you can move on to the next one. I like to put all my hardware in, and in our case, our straps, and then tighten them all down. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in the other straps finger tight. Normally, you would just put the bolts, again, directly into the radiator and just sandwich it like this, and you're good to go. We just had this little bit here do our custom application. All right, let's talk upper and lower radiator hoses. This is honestly where some people kind of get lost because there are a couple different ways to go about doing it. You could just get like really flexible hose and run it in there. Um, if you know, if you have the room, you can make the nice gradual turns, but we don't have that luxury as you'll see in a minute. It's pretty tight on the lower. Um, the upper is not so bad, but the lower is a little bumpy. So I went to my local auto parts store and just kind of went in the back and asked if it was okay if I looked around their uh, coolant hoses. And I found this one was actually a little bit longer. I've already trimmed it down. And who knows what this goes to? No clue, could be anything. Uh, same with this. And all the thing you need to measure is your total total distance, kind of what shape it needs to be in, and then the diameters of your tubes. Uh, this one I believe is an inch and three quarters, and this one is, I think, is an inch and three eighths, or thereabouts. So they can be a little bit off because you're going to, you know, close it down with a hose clamp. So you can go maybe quarter inch either way and probably be just fine. So um, that's what you need to know about finding your upper and lower radiator hoses. Just go to uh, any parts house, AutoZone or Alley, something like that, uh, Napa, and uh, ask around and explain what you're doing, and they'll be more than happy to help you out. And of course, you can use the uh, universal flex tube if you have enough room for the nice gradual turns. So I left my radiator a little bit loose here just so I can, uh, you know, fit everything together a little easier on me because we're gonna have to lift up the radiator just a smidge to get the lower hose on and the upper hose. So you can see this weird shape we have. We have kind of like a curly cue where it needs to come out and over here and then at this weirdo angle. And it's gonna be different than something on like a small block or a big block or any of the engines that came in this car stock. So it is gonna be a little bit of a challenge, especially to get a nice fitted hose like we have, but it really wasn't that bad. It only took me about 15 minutes or so of looking. Oh yeah, that slides on nice. Check that out. Yeah, that looks great. That's gonna do awesome. So we can just tighten down our hose clamps. Alrighty, so now we can grab our hose clamp, put it on nice and straight. You'll feel the barb. It looks like this, like on the end of this, this little barb. The radiator hose has the same setup. We're just gonna put our hose clamp straight and behind it and tighten that bad boy down and links down below in the description to hose clamps are there for your convenience, but honestly, they're available at every single auto parts store for not a lot of money. And then we can do the same thing for the lower hose, make sure it's behind that barb on our radiator. As far as tightness goes, I notice a lot of people over tighten the you know what out of hose clamps, you know, just wrist tight with a nut driver is perfectly fine. They don't need to be Hulk tight just like that, be absolutely perfect. And now we can move on. Okay, so now we can put in our fan shroud, load it up with our fans. <clears throat> oh, there we go, that looks good. <laughs> We're getting there. Oh yeah, that's a good sound. Okay, so it's more or less in its home. Now I can put the bolts in. So now our shroud is affixed to our radiator. That means there's really nothing in the way of us putting on our upper radiator hose. I've already put our uh, hose clamps on, so we can just slide that bad boy in its home. I've left my radiator a little bit loose because I'm gonna need to pick it up just to slide them out in order to get the hose on. Um, usually you don't have to do that because obviously there won't be a core support in your way. All right. Got the top on, that's good. Grab our hose clamp. So once you, get, once you get your hose clamp in place, let's just tighten that down. I like to leave them ah, just like that, pointing up, you know, not pointing this way, because if there's anything that interferes with it, it's gonna hit it. So I have to leave them up like that. And then put the other end onto our water pump. Actually, we gotta put our hose clamp on. So make sure our hose clamp goes beyond right behind our first bar, which is right about there. Make sure it's not gonna interface with the water pump pulley. 
and just tighten that down. And there we go. Heat eater hoses installed. So now we can hook up our heater core lines and they're both 5 eighths on this car. It's pretty, it's kind of an old way to do it. Normally it's 5 eighths and 3 quarter and you would put the 5 eighths on the left and the 3 quarter on the right. But we're just going to kind of force it on there and make it work. It is rubber, so a little elastic there. But they are a bit too long, so you can see that they're, you could put it there. You could do it, not cut it if you really wanted to, but I think it looks a little goofy. So we're just going to route it how we really want it to be and then mark it with, I have my nice gold paint pen. So I'm just gonna mark it there for that guy. And then do the same for this guy. Yeah, it's okay to leave yourself a little extra cause you can always cut more off later. Doesn't have to be perfect on the first one. There we go, that should be pretty good. All right. I got my hose clamp ready. Slide that on, see how it fits, see how we did. And I think that looks pretty perfect. So we can move on to the next one. Cut that bad boy up. It's important too, when you're manipulating these heater core hoses that you don't like you know, go real tough with them and pull them and because the fittings that are actually in the heater core are really fragile and if it wasn't leaking to begin with um, and you can reuse it like we're going to do, then if you keep pulling on it, it's going to leak and we want to avoid that. Got my hose clamp already. Slide that on, do a test fit a Rooney, see how we did. I'm hoping it's good. Let's see. Let's see. There we go. It took a little bit of convincing, but check that out. Wow, that looks really, really nice much, much better than having a bunch of excess. Let me just tighten those hose clamps up. So you can see our heater core lines come out of our heater core on the firewall into their nice little clip. Usually they have a clip there. If they don't, that's okay too. You can zip time together and stuff and just make sure they're not flapping around and knocking against your headers or something. That's what makes these clips nice. And they come down this nice gradual sweep. There's no kinks. This is what you're looking for. So I have some 730 seconds coolant line here. And if you are going drag racing, you're doing some sort of NHRA event, um, you really need a coolant overflow tank for this to go into. But if you're doing just a regular street application, just back in the day, the solution was to not overheat. It only overflows if you're going to be overheating. And since we have a nice aluminum radiator and two fans, I'm not going to worry about that. And we're just going to feed this down. That way it doesn't spray all over the inside of our engine bay and maybe even end up on our windshield. That'd be no bueno. So we're just going to kind of route that down in a way that gets down beneath the engine. Like that. And then ours actually already has a, like a drain or a hole here. Probably what that hole was intended for originally when the car was made. We can see that looks pretty good. But again, if you are doing a uh, race application or something, uh, or if you're really worried about it, then I have to advise you to get a coolant overflow tank. All right, now it's a pretty exciting part. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous. Everyone should be nervous at this point. We're gonna remove our radiator cap and make sure Radiator cap looks great. And then I have a fancy funnel. You could just use a regular funnel and put it in there and uh, fill your coolant system up that way. But I have this nice one. And since it's just me here by myself and I want to keep an eye on everything, I'm going to use it. And what makes this fancy funnel cool, and there's a link down below in the description to it, it has this cool plunger. So you can put your funnel on there, put the plunger in there, put a bunch of coolant in there, take the plunger out and then get underneath the vehicle and you can see whether or not uh, you have some work to do. All right, so I have some pre-diluted 50-50 mixed antifreeze and coolant. Um, alternatively, you could use distilled water and concentrate, whatever you want to use. It's really not that crazy important. I just have some universal stuff and I'm going to pour that in my fancy funnel. Like that. And then Moment of truth, we, if we pull this plunger, we shouldn't hear any of it hit the ground. Now 
Now I'm looking underneath the car. So far, so good. So I'm going to keep adding coolant. <laughs> And as we start and run the car later on, uh, obviously the coolant level is going to drop quite a bit, but we can get the radiator as full as possible and bring that level up. Um, it's a good idea to do at this point, because I'd rather learn that I need to work on the coolant system before I try to start it, than learn about it when I'm raring to go and the engine's about to start. So I've put in enough coolant. It's kind of hard to see down in there, but... Basically, the level is right about here, and that's exactly where I want it. I want this expansion inside of the top of the tank. And as the, you know, the days go by, and I'm not going to work on this every day, all day, uh, air bubbles and stuff are going to make their way out, and as we start the engine, air bubbles are going to make their way out and stuff like that. But it is good for our leak down test. Now, the moment of truth is we can get underneath the car. So we're going to look underneath the vehicle, all the places the water is going to go, especially the lower radiator hose. That's a big one. And we're going to attach this to the water pump up there. No leaks. Admittedly, it's not under pressure or anything. We're going to do another leak test um, after we have it running for a little while. But just a good idea to look underneath it and make sure there aren't any, you know, gaping puddles everywhere, you know, going in as fast as we uh, are going out as fast as we put it in. So just take a look underneath the vehicle and make sure it is bone dry, just like ours is. And then we can put our coolant cap back on, making sure nothing gets in there over the course of however long it takes us to get the engine started. Just like that. Excellent. And now that the cooling system is basically done, we can worry about other things. But we will cover that in a future video. So now we have a finished product. You can really see how much of an interference fit our radiator and our water pump would be. So that is something you're going to have to plan when you are building your LS. What is your LS going into? At the time when I built this LS, I had no idea what, the, what was going into. I just wanted to build the engine for the series. So a little bit of planning will save you some headaches and heartaches in the future. And this is a good example of that. But with a little bit of ingenuity and a little bit of cleverness, we got around it. So that is how you put a cooling system in your LS swap. It is going to look a little different if you have a different car than me, which you most likely do. It's probably going to be a lot easier for you, actually. But the process is exactly the same. Thank you so much for watching. If this video has helped you at all, please consider giving it a like. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any more content we have coming very shortly. Thank you so much, Racing, for sponsoring this video. And I'll see you next time.